doing a nice sail at the moment. We're only doing about four knots, but um, we are on our way to a place called Vistamar Marina. We're going to stop here for the night. Uh, we've got a friend that's pulled in here for the evening. They had engine troubles, so well, there's not many places to anchor along here at the moment. So we've decided to go in here and uh, spend the evening there and enjoy this little coastline and do some more work on the boat. Got to finish cleaning the boat up. So it's not a bad thing. You've got to get in these marinas now and again and just sort your boat out, polish the stainless steel, clean the decks properly. And it's a great opportunity to do that. To do that. So we may even go up the mast, given half the chance today and uh, clean the rigging from the top down. So that's the plan at the moment. We can see the marina in the distance. We've called them up on channel 71 and they are currently just checking out what berths they have available and they're going to call us back and then in we go. So top tip for anybody that's sailing out in the Panama region or in fact all the way from the Sea of Cortez down to Panama and on the Caribbean side is to sign up to the Panama Posse and if you sign up to these guys you will get a great discount at the marinas along both coastlines. So for example here in this Vistamar Marina we get a 25% discount and that's actually quite a good saving. Um, you know, otherwise we probably wouldn't have gone in here. So oh, that's the plan. It'd be like a drive just to get out of it or in it. Vista Mar Marina, dry dock, long road to Vista Mar, and the boys are just about to go surfing because we've got some surf today. So this big beach. Why not crew with us? This isn't where they're surfing though, they're surfing there, are they? They, they change go, their mind. They want to go surf at the other end. Okay. This beach next to Vista Bar Marina is very popular with local fishing boats. Early every morning they'd launch these boats from the beach, returning in the evenings with boatloads full of fish, which the whole family would help unload. Oh, this looks like snapping material to me. Oh, there they go. There they go. Oh, straight into a pretty big wave. We love surfing here and would meet up with Antoine and Nathan most days and walk for a quite a long time to get to the best spot. Somebody got it. Yeah. I volunteer. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, it's great fun and, it's, and you enjoy it far more because you've cooked it. <laughs> it's a labour of love. Why not came over to plan our departure for Kuiba together the following morning. Big Pacific swell coming in here. I don't know if the film will capture how big they are for us. Whoa. It's nice that they got big breaks in between because you don't crash into the next one. You just rise and fall. <laughs> here comes the next one. We left in good weather, blissfully unaware of the current and storms that were waiting for us. We need to leave Panama now. We are running from this nasty storm. We've been running for about how long? Two hours now. Two hours. And there's lightning everywhere. It's getting to six o'clock, so the sun's about to go down. We've had current against us and wind hard on, not hard on the nose, but been beating into it a bit and as you can see the lightning is just going crazy out there turning one engine off also have one because we've been motoring so much because we've had no wind we've had one engine on so now our fuel is quite low in that one engine so now we have one engine with fuel and one very low so not good to be in a storm like that going swimmingly really <laughs> so we put down the anchor in uh, 
I forget the name of this island, I will look it up. Um, at about 4 a.m. yesterday, beautiful place in Coiba. Um, it was obviously pitch black and pouring with rain when we came in, so we dropped anchor and got ourselves warm and dry with a cup of tea and went straight to bed. Very jungle like here, very much like the coastline where we were in Linton Bay. Um, the Why Not saw anchor just in front of us. And since we've arrived, we've just had storm after storm. So the weather's not looking great for us. Boat's a bit of a tip, as it always is after a passage. Actually got our wet weather gear out yesterday, can you believe it? That's the first time since the UK. How are you feeling about being in Cooiba, boys? That's not nice. horrible. Rain, rain, go away. Yeah. The weather here right now isn't very good, so don't come here at rainy season. No, rainy season is lightning season, lots of lightning so far. We didn't have much fuel left, and basically if you're out in these remote areas and out at sea, it's probably the, one of the worst situations to be in. The weather's quite unpredictable, and we felt the best decision would be to go and get some diesel as quickly as we could. Um, so we left Why Not, and we made our way to Santa Catalina, a popular surf spot. So this has been quite an adventure actually, we've sailed from Vistamar Marina to Cuiba National Park and um, we had quite a scary sail there. Lack of wind so a lot of motoring um, and then wind on the nose, more motoring, um, thunder and lightning and um, finally we made it into Cuiba um, for the night where we took shelter. In fact we arrived there at 4 in the morning and um, had a good sleep um, in the morning and then another sleep in the afternoon to try and catch up and get ready for our next passage. So um, we had the rangers from Kariba National Park turn up to collect their fee. Um, they didn't speak English and we don't speak much Spanish and we tried our best to explain to them that we were literally seeking refuge there for the storm to, to abate and then we were going to carry on which is what we've, what we've done. So we're now on our way to Santa Catalina where we plan to try and get some more cash and decent fuel and we're exceptionally low on fuel so it's quite a horrible situation to be in right out here in the middle of nowhere um, we're literally surrounded by jungle with a couple of beach settlements and um, probably a two hour bus trip away from a main town so we will let you know how we get on with trying to find some cash and then how we go about getting some diesel because the one option was going up the river which is uh, whoop, that's just behind me now and um, that was going to be quite an exercise we estimated that trip to probably take us about five days because we'd need to work with currents to get in there make sure the tides were high enough so we could get over sandbars and also have the tide with us when we go in so that if we do run aground we get lifted off and also so that we save on fuel that's how low we are so we didn't feel that was an option um, so this is the second best and hopefully it works out Okay, well we've got the anchorage here on our, our port side, there are four of the yachts that we can see in there. Um, the rain has started in front of us, now we've got uh, a lot of dark clouds, we've got lightning visible and we think it's all coming this way sadly. Um, but no surprise, this is Panama and it's the rainy season and there's a lot of lightning here. Luckily the rain hit us just after dropping anchor, so we didn't get wet. We made dinner and settled down to sleep for the night. In Santa Catalina, we got here with very little fuel, so we are now on the hunt for fuel. We are going off to the very tiny little village down there in the dinghy, so we're not sure what we're going to find. Whether we have to catch a taxi to a petrol station or whether we have to get some cash and go to the fuel barge, who knows, but we're going to go and find out. There's some waves in the distance but the boys are eager to go and explore, but our main priority is to get Makara filled up with fuel so that our generator can run happily and that we have fuel to get places should we need to. Dinghy's gone down, ready to go, just put fuel in her. Dill's going to go and unclip her. Right. 
So I've just been dropped off in the dinghy here and quite a beautiful little village though I guess when you look through it um, in this video it might not seem that attractive but it's actually quite a nice little Panamanian street here and we're going to have a look I see some dive bags up the road there let me see if we can go and get some fuel now Being a popular surf spot, this village has quite a few rustic hostels and cafes. This hostel had a great eco-friendly design. Okay, so some good news. I think we found a way to go and get some diesel. Um, we're going to take a local's car into town. Um, there's a station that's probably about 20 minutes away. He's going to charge us $20 to get there. And um, hopefully we can get some diesel there. It sounds like we can. The only downside is the waves are progressively getting bigger and bigger out here. And this is the only place we can land the dinghy. Um, it doesn't look too rough out there, but bear in mind, once we come back with over 100 litres of fuel, we've got to get that in the dinghy and back to the boat somehow. So, it will be an interesting exercise indeed. That night we had another big thunderstorm with lots of lightning. Lightning season in Panama, the rainy season. We all sat inside, huddled together in one cabin, watching a movie, hoping the lightning wouldn't hit us. Boats are often struck by lightning here, and we knew of six during our stay. It's perfect? Okay, cool. So I'm off with Kaio, we're going to go and get some diesel for the boats. This man has kindly helped us uh, with transport to the gas station, so we're going to go and see what we can uh, get. So thanks to him, we're going to get out of this mess. The car trip to the fuel station took about 35 minutes. Kayo had an interesting driving technique whereby he slowed down at each lady he passed so that he could hoot and chat. This was a local primary school. Schools in Panama had at the time been closed for almost a year thanks to COVID. Pretty much in the middle of nowhere here, but um, kindly been taken to the service station and they've got diesel, they're going to take a bank card. So this is basically an excellent result. A very nice gentleman here helping us fill up with diesel. And once we're done, back to the boat, get on the dinghy, fill up, and then we're ready to go again. Whilst Dad was busy getting diesel, we took the time to explore the beautiful beach near the boat. We had the beach all to ourselves. Well, that's if you don't count the hermit crabs. <laughs> I think it's hermit crab. There's a nice necklace, Joe. Well, we're taking them. No, we're not taking any of them. They love it. They love, live on the beach. Welcome to the adoption centre. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my word. Look at all these Hermes. Look at him. He's got... Wow, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> this one's bigger. Look what they're doing here. What are they munching? Our piece of bread. Mum, look how big he is. Really like mangoes. Fruit eating hermit crabs. How are you guys fighting over that one? I think he's trying to get that shell because he's got a very small little shell. I wonder if he's trying to get the shell. Hey! Leave him alone. Leave him. Yeah, I think that one over there with a tiny shell is trying to get this one's shell. There we go, guy. You 
you can escape. Not only were there hermit crabs, but there were these colourful crabs with purple claws. what these buildings were from. I know they used to bring the prisoners here before they were transported to the Coiba prison camp. So maybe these are prison buildings or something. Maybe a cell. I wonder how he ended up here. I mean, he probably had his sails up. And he went and he just kept going. Is it a sailing boat? It's been here a long time. Hamburg. It's been a big boat. Folded in half. Wow. After loads of fun on the beach, we headed back to collect Dad and all the diesel from the mainland. Clouds are rolling in, we're going to get some rain today. They don't start raining before Dad's back. Successful fuel purchase. All our jerry cans. We're on the way back to Mankara to now distribute, put all this into the tanks. At least it's from a proper fuel station, not uh, some random big jerry can on the side of the road. So we're now siphoning the fuel from the cans to the diesel tanks. So it all turned out okay in the end, but we've now learned to always fill up when it's easy, as you never know what the next place may be like.